there are only two types of agriculture. There's regenerative agriculture and degenerative agriculture. And every other kind of agriculture is one or the other. What's regenerative is management and the decision-making process. My goal is not simply to sustain the current condition, but to regenerate it into what it once was. And what has been lost is how the land was conceived of. It's still held up in that way in other, in Afro-Indigenous communities and Black and Indigenous communities and other communities, a different conception of land as an elder that can only be stewarded and cared for in communities. Is a lot of these practices and a lot of this knowledge has been held for hundreds of years by people indigenous to this continent. There are cultures that have always upheld regenerative practices and always understood the holism and the utter dependency of this human race on every other species in every native environment. It's our way of life. It's, it's, it holds up to our practices, our, our stewardship practices, our faith and believing things, our ability to have respect and reverence for all things. Well, are we looking at the people who are actually doing a regenerative part of the agriculture? Because I feel like indigenous people, especially, and people of color, they've been doing this their whole life. Our, our farming is directly tied to our ceremonies and our religious beliefs. And so, therefore, it's resilient as, as the get-go because those two things need each other. Instead of us being, you know, top-down managers of a natural system, we can humble ourselves. I mean, there's, there's no way that you can't work with nature. I farm in sync with nature. We raise cattle in sync with nature now. We, we no longer fight seasons. So it's, it's restoring a natural balance. And it's, it, the, the biggest thing that we've really learned is that it sequesters carbon in the soil. So it removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and it actually fixes it in the soil and it keeps it in the soil. When we get the soil right, everything corrects itself. True health begins with the soil. Yeah, and if you have healthy soil, you have healthy pastures. If you have healthy pastures, you have healthy livestock. If you have healthy livestock, what they are producing is a healthy um, food. We farm this way because we recognize the connection between our own health, our family, and the her earth and what we eat, mm -hmm. it goes back, and that goes back, of course, to the soil. It's all connected. I prefer not to use any pesticides at all, as I'm pursuing a balance of life and a balanced ecosystem on the farm. I really want to get rid of chemicals, too, um, because there's people getting sick out here that weren't at one time. This whole thing is about people. My community, I really feel like I wouldn't be here without them. And so they are an integral part of my business plan. I think you get into regenerative ag and you realize you're actually building things. This model allows for more people to be back on the land, not for you to have to have a job in town just to squeak by. Everything we do is building on itself and creating a legacy for the future, that we're leaving this better than we found it. You know, Callie and I get up every day and we sequester carbon. We get up every day and we make pollinator habitat. We clean water. We are rebuilding the resilience of the world. And that feels incredible and gives us tremendous hope to see how quickly it happens once you get the systems in place. Regenerative agriculture is just watching how the land is actually healing on a regular basis from year to year. There is no single piece of land that is the same. There's no single farmer and there's no single farm business. There's no single ecological or cultural community that is the same. And a regenerative farm would not just see that, but would grasp it as a source of innovation. How do we measure our success? Do we look at earthworms and we smell it and we feel it? We also kind of look at how many insects are crawling around in our fields, how many birds are flying around above the fields, how the crops do. We've seen the increase of uh, pollinators, tomato pollinators over the last seven years. There's a lot more grass, uh, different kinds of grasses that grow. The first two years didn't see any worms in the soil. And this year, as I'm like turning beds over and stuff, I'm seeing more and more. Our water infiltration is off the map, you know. Mm -hmm. 
we've made it through drought. So, you know, but you know, we've had what, two or three seven year droughts, which is to me, we're doing something right. It's kind of miraculous how fast nature can work. Like it's only been four years. And, and we have earthworms again. We've created topsoil in one season of grazing, one year of grazing. It's, it's really quickly, really quickly you can see profound changes. I measure success in a lot of ways by am I excited about what we're doing and do I wake up each day wanting to be a part of what we're doing. And I think I measure the success of the direction we're heading by the the joy and passion that still goes along with that, even when sometimes they're really hard things. We are seeing pretty great results, like as far as what I value, the health and vitality and the happiness of the animals and the happiness of the people. All those things are growing.